Doomed, we are all doomed, both individually and collectively as a species. The reason why this truism is barely given the light of day in polite society is because it is intolerably disheartening to the average mortal, necessitating as it does the employment of vigorous mental gymnastics in order to deny the otherwise glaring fact that all mankind's struggles, tribulations, sweat, tears, and shrieks of excruciating agony and mental torment will ultimately add up to precisely a big fat zero. Once, when pointing out this very fact to a life-affirming DNA Borg, I was rejoined for failing to take into account the wide oceans of time that separate us from this future eventuality, as if A, it has been preordained that our species will be an exceptionally long-lived one, and B, as if the fact that our extinction is located temporarily in the future somehow mitigates against the fact that we are all essentially mired in a pointless, futile, and malignantly useless tragic comedy where the only function of life is the maintenance and replication of strings of DNA. The focus of my talk today will be hinged on how precariously our survival on this rotating lonely planet will be as we approach what I refer to in my theorizing as a critical threshold of technological advancement. Once this threshold is crossed, and there are no compelling reasons that I can see why we should anticipate our technological and scientific advancement stalling anytime soon, then the self-destruction of our species is, I will argue, all but assured. One of the most common objections to this claim is that we are too smart to be a comparatively short-lived species. We can use science and technology to circumnavigate around any existential threats that might face our species in the future. However, I find this argument grossly naive for the simple reasons that firstly, it is the scientific and technological advances themselves that pose the very existential threats that they claim science and technology will prevent from occurring, and secondly, there is no positive correlation whatsoever between intelligence and survival of any given form of life. To illustrate this point most emphatically, consider the T-Rex, not, it must surely be agreed, the smartest animal to ever tread the earth, yet this species of animal managed to survive for close to a hundred million years. If intelligence truly improves the chances of a species surviving for such impressively lengthy periods of time, then what are we to make of the T-Rex's durability on this Earth? A second common objection is that our species is likely to spread out into the universe in the not too distant future and thus ensure that we survive for the kinds of time frames that would place us as the most long-lived species in the history of known life, perhaps even surpassing the longevity of certain forms of bacteria that have persisted on this planet for billions of years. This too, I find to be a naive hope for staving off our inevitable and inexorable extinction due to the sheer mind-boggling distances and time frames involved in interstellar travel. Even the nearest star to our own is 4.25 light years away, which translates into 25 trillion miles from the Earth. And even if we miraculously managed to get even that far, where would we set up shop? There are no orbiting planets in that dual star system, and a voyage of yet even more trillions of miles would be required to reach solar systems beyond that one that are even more inhospitable to the survival of life than our own solar system. Much ado is currently being made about a future manned mission to Mars, which could, I concede, plausibly provide a temporary outpost of sorts for our species in the event that we destroy this planet. However, there is a huge difference between establishing a temporary outpost on an alien world and creating a perfectly self-sustaining civilization far from the shores of our home planet. Please spare me, by the way, the ordeal of having to stomach the enthusing sounds of anyone listening to this video waxing lyrical about the Mars One project that proposes to send men and women to Mars on a one-way voyage by 2023 AD. This whole project reeks of stupidity. Let's just take a brief look at the recruitment process of the astronauts alone in order to back up this claim. The people behind this project have deemed that it would be a good idea to recruit these people by appealing to members of the public to apply for jobs with them. The only real requirements are that they are prepared to die on Mars without ever returning to Earth and that they are happy to be filmed for a TV show whilst eking out survival on the Red Planet and this is hoped to help generate revenue 
to fund this laughably ridiculous venture. I mean, it's also risible. Now that I have proffered a short rebuttal to two of the most common objections to us being a short-lived species, let me just briefly outline why I see human extinction as an event that lies merely hundreds or at most thousands of years from now, rather than millions or billions of years into the deep future. As I intend to limit this video in time, this outline will necessarily be hurried and to the point. Nanotechnology, artificial intelligence, genetic engineering. The potential scope and destructive powers of these fledgling technologies is truly frightening. Man-made viruses could be designed to be airborne. Imagine a lethal and contagious airborne virus targeted at the human race, sweeping across the cities, towns and villages of this world. Imagine the despondency in people's faces as the streets are lined with unmoving corpses, the clothes of the cadavers being gently caressed by the breeze of the wind as their unmoving eyes stare blindly at the sky in horror. Imagine invisible nanobots clawing their way into your skin and releasing deadly toxins into your bloodstream, or swarms of nanobots systematically converting living, breathing tissue into inanimate grey goo. Picture, if you will, cyborgs, robots and drones firing laser guns into large crowds of petrified citizens as they inadvertently trample to death each other in frenzies of blind, uncontrollable panic. Unsettling as it is to visualize such horrors, one has to ask, how are we going to possibly prevent such horrors from unfolding in the future to the degree that it will still be possible for the majority of the human race to swallow the lie that life is worth perpetuating indefinitely? I don't believe that we will be able to, especially after cognitive mind science delivers a fatal blow to the fallacious belief that we are free unitary beings and reveal us to be merely things, DNA animated puppets dancing to the pull of the strings that compel our every thought and action, bio-robots cobbled together by blind, dumb and remorseless physical forces. As disenchantment sweeps the land of technologically advanced nations, both philanthropic and misanthropic forms of antinatalism will gain adherence. With the technologies that are likely to become available in the not too distant future, mere hundreds of years from now, our species' future prospects look terminal indeed.